Hey beautiful people, hey beautiful people, welcome back. It's your girl, Donna C. Shea Tara, back at it again with another back at it again. Welcome to another episode of Conversations with God through you. Yay! <gasps> Y'all, we have been going consistently for like almost two months now oh my gosh if you are new here welcome to our channel we celebrate really small wins that other people may think is really too much to be given energy to but we love to celebrate it here at conversation with god through you so we're excited about our consistency amen we're excited about our showing up if you are a returning user hi how you been how have you been it's been days if you are a returning user you was here on friday night it's been since friday like what's up how are you how are you how are you how are you i pray that you are well okay so i'm trying to test out my timings um if you are new here and if you are returning if you're returning you already know if you're new here then you know that on monday nights we don't just record for our youtube episode we also i'm pointing over here because there's another device set up over here we also are recording for our podcast episodes as well so i usually like to go with the flow but i'm also trying to test out the timing structures of youtube for youtube analytics so we're going to dive right into today's topic okay we're going to get started on it and if you see me if i'm looking like i'm looking down or i'm not looking at the camera it's because i'm starting i'm still getting used to the new setup um my best friend got me some new equipment so my content creation can be a little bit easier and a little bit better so i'm getting used to the new setup and still getting used to the structure of everything and just getting used to looking up in the kind of way that i have to now so i apologize if it comes off a little weird or if i look a little weird i'm just adjusting to all of the new blessings that we are getting and everything y'all we got our first set of trolls too it was so crazy i am so proud of our progress Aggression. I'm saying all of that to say, like, my excitement about being consistent, my excitement about trolls, is because when you first start on any journey, it is so hard to stay consistent. It's so hard to truly believe in yourself. It's so hard to stay in alignment with the power that is inside of you. But I promise you, on the days that that motivation isn't there, that is when discipline and consistency needs to kick in. I don't always feel good about getting on camera, but I always feel good about showing up for myself so in the moments where i don't necessarily feel worthy for the vision i feel worthy enough for myself to at least be present enough inside of the vision even if i don't always feel a wholly connected to the vision so i want you to keep that in mind moving forward with whatever you do with whatever it is that you're trying to execute it doesn't happen overnight. You have to keep showing up for it. And it's the showing up that makes it better. It's the showing up that you're built. It's the showing up that when you do get trolling comments, you don't overreact or negatively react or give them a weird reaction. Because at the end of the day, regardless of what they're saying, it's a reflection of you, your business, your brand, and what you're trying to build. Me personally, I was so excited. I was so excited when I seen those comments. Because it's like, yo, thank you for the view count. Oh my gosh, I finally made it. I can't wait. Like, I, I, I get excited with adversary. Ad adversity. Adversary. Adversity. Like, I get excited about that. Because I know that it's showing me progression. That new levels comes new devils. So when I'm being unnecessarily antagonized, amen, I, I know there's something about to happen. <laughs> we about to elevate. <laughs> okay, so like I said, I'm learning on the, the YouTube timings. Um, so we're going to dive right into today's topic, ma'am. Now, I know you're probably like, why is the scripture after? And I meant to change this scripture actually to the scripture of the day um, on my Bible app because it was a really good one. But anyway, I definitely heard it there. So this is for Friday night. If you are interested in uh, just diving into, you know, Bible study a little bit more, just building a better, stronger, more formidable relationship with God, come check us out on Friday. You know what I'm saying? Come come hang out with us. Uh, we really get into it. We get into ourselves. We get into the word. Uh, bring a drink. Roll up. Pour up. Whatever you got to do to make you more 
more comfortable as long as you are comfortable with coming and connecting with us as we connect with ourselves and with source amen so today's topic okay so if you have been here on Friday nights, you already know the vibes. Like, God has been dealing with me on the simplicity of the journey. So, the other day, um, God gave me this revelation on naked. Nakedness in the garden and in the significance to us being naked. Because for a long time, we were told that we were naked because we were without clothes. But there was another level of nakedness that God revealed to me that we had in the garden that that once that apple got bitten was covered up. And that was nakedness in our beings. Not just physically, but spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. We were naked before God. We had this ability to be one with our emotions and not be stunted or doubtful or weighted down by what we felt it's not just enough that he hears our thoughts he also wants us to be comfortable enough within ourselves to share our thoughts our feelings our our ups and our downs with him and when we bit that apple in the garden there was not just a clothing that was cast upon us there was a clothing within out within us that was cast upon us so that's that that's what i want to talk about is learning how to become naked not naked before god i just use that as an example that's probably going to be further discussed on friday nights um uh friday nights healing at the dark session but there's a nakedness that we need to be comfortable with that we need to tap back into a a vulnerability that that is keeping us from connecting keeping us from god keeping us especially from ourselves but more importantly is keeping us from purpose everybody wants to be seen as this strong one everybody wants to be seen as this one that just has it all figured out and although god wants us to be maintained and 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 composed in our emotions and we should be because emotional decisions happen to lead to destruction often more than not it does not negate the place for emotions and i think as a society we have gotten in entirely too comfortable with not knowing not learning and not being willing to express our emotions passive aggressiveness has now become the new i love you and i think that that needs to change i know it needs to change not just for the sake of the fact that it's a disrespect to one another to harbor emotions or overly express them or express them in a way that you know will leave the other person confused or confusing the situation even more it's a slap in the face to god because when we're unable to share ourselves with each other number one that tells me that you don't have a relationship with yourself and so if you don't have a relationship with yourself that's also telling me mm, you might not have a relationship with god and and we can think that people not having spiritual foundations is not is not something that's serious you will be entirely fucking wrong go ahead and hang out with somebody who don't know nothing and i'm not even talking about god i don't care what the religion is go ahead and hang out with somebody who doesn't have a foundation and see where that gets you okay so um we have to get back to that that vulnerable state where we're not we don't feel weak when it comes down to having expressing or feeling emotions i think the association with emotions and weakness has been too much reinforced I, as a black woman if i if i get too emotional i'm an angry black woman if i get if i feel too much if i express myself i'm i'm a bitch i'm i'm this that and the third we have labeled all of these valid expressions or valid emotions and most of them are are associated with negative connotations i want to know who told you your feelings were wrong who told you your emotions were invalid who told you that you were doing too much expressing yourself? Who told you gaining clarity on an emotional situation is adding fuel? See, who told you that? 
We have to get to that part. Who told you that? And if you haven't like figured out by now, sis is a little expressive. So um, my whole entire life, I was told that my feelings were bad. My whole entire life, I was told that I needed to curb how I felt. Whole time. Whole time. I'm healing. Whole time. I'm diving deep. Whole time. Whole time. Okay. I'm building intimacy with myself and with God. And there's a level of knowingness about myself that I possess that people twice my age do not because they keep harboring their feelings. Me, I'm never harboring my feelings. Never. Now, depending on how I express it, depends on the situation, the people involved, and et cetera, et cetera. But one thing about it, and two things for sure, there's this quote. I believe it's by Zora Neale Hurston. And it says... I feel like I'm paraphrasing it because I feel like I might be getting this wrong. If you stay quiet while they'll kill you, they said they'll say you enjoyed it or something along those lines. And that's literally what it is. And that's not just with racism. That's not just with sexism. That's not just with, that's with everything. When you don't speak, when you don't acknowledge, number one, you are stunting yourself. So whatever age you started stunting yourself, emotionally, that's where you're, I don't care if you're physically 50, if you cut yourself off at 12, baby, emotionally, you're barely a teenager. You see what I'm saying? It's stunting yourself, but two, you are cutting your circulation off. You are adding unnecessary energy and keeping it within your body. Now, I'm not a medical expert, but what I am is a spiritual expert. What I'm saying is, yes, some diseases are caused by medical reason, but some diseases are caused by stored up energy in the body. That's why I don't trust people who are always sick. Why are you always sick in your body? For what? What aren't you dealing with that is weighing on you physically like this? You're always sick something's always wrong with you things that don't even run in your family are now happening to you and again i understand recessive genes i get it at the same time i also know how energy works and if i have too much energy stored up that's that's actively acting against what's inside of me there's going to be a clash and what happens when a clash happens war breaks out there's collateral damage on both sides of the war every single time whether you feel like you're the good side or the bad side, it's irrelevant. Amen? We have to learn how to feel. You can't express until you feel. What are you feeling? We like to, I've seen this, I was watching a scene the other day. And she said, every time I ask somebody how they feel, they always tell me what they think. I want to know how you feel, not what you think. I think that, no, what do you feel? I can clearly say when I'm scared, when I'm nervous, when I don't have it in me, when I'm when I'm when I'm overwhelmed. How do you feel? We have to learn the words that go with our feelings, not just with our thoughts, not just with our habits, not just with with societal standards with us. What is going on inside of you? What, what, what is the conversations that are playing when you're just sitting in silence? When nobody is around, how are you speaking to you? These are questions we need to know the answers to for ourselves. Because so many of us have these false realities built up over our lack of emotion. And then when we when we go up against an energy that is bringing out these emotions, we shut those energies down. We shut those energies out. We make those energies feel less than because they're not cooperating with the story that we are choosing to tell ourselves. Oh, they're too nice. Mm, something must be wrong. Why does something have to be wrong with somebody being nice to you? Is it that they're too nice? Or is it that 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 you don't know how to receive, you don't know how to receive good energy because you don't you don't feel good energy within yourself? Are they too nice or do you feel less than? Were you silent or were you silenced? You know what I mean? Like, be for real. Be for real. There's a whole life 
on the other side of understanding your emotions. And, and when it comes down to maintaining or mastering your emotions, you can't master or maintain something you don't even understand how to feel. How dare you say that I have control over my emotions, but the reality is, no, you don't. You just cut your, you just shut down. You think that shutting down is control over your emotions. You think that that walking away, letting it go, and just letting the ball drop is control over your emotions. Let me tell you something. You are doing nothing but imprisoning yourself in that same exact feeling. That feeling is going to stay with you. That cycle is not going to end. It's not going to stop until you make a different decision. Until you learn how to feel a different way. Until you stop looking at your feelings like they're your enemies. Our emotions are our friends. And the reality is I, I need us to really understand. Because I think a lot of us really think that life is supposed to be one way or the other. We are dual beings. We exist in dualities. We exist in hypocrisies. We exist in contradictions. Get comfortable with that. Okay? Okay. You can't know pleasure without knowing pain. You can't know peace until you've been to war. You can't know love without knowing hurt. One goes with the other. So if I know that pain has been here before me, pain is going to be here with me and pain is going to be here after me why would i not become cool with her why would i not make that girl like my my twin you know what i'm saying why would i lock it with her because she's not going anywhere and yes there's levels to pain and degrees to pain and how it feels and how it how it impacts is different depending on the person the scenario the situation etc etc so what you define as pain may not be necessarily my definition of pain but it doesn't hurt you or me any less so why wouldn't i become friends with her oh this is gonna hurt me huh she gonna be on yeah real bad <laughs> real bad and then once pain start talking, let me tell you who's right about purpose. Once pain, let me know it's going to hurt real bad. Purpose like, ah, 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 pain, don't be cute. Yeah, it's going to hurt you, my good sis. But because of this pain, and she know it, she know it, pain, you know it, this purpose talking, this purpose, pain, you know it, because of this pain. It is going to be a direct correlation to your purpose. And depending on how you carry the pain depends on how long this particular pain and this particular cycle is going to plague you. So I highly recommend you pop some popcorn, sit next to pain, right along with purpose, and watch it all play out. When you are aware and you know you have a good rapport with your emotions, you get to the point where you are no longer asking, why is this happening to me? You're asking, who can I or who am I supposed to become in the midst of this? What is this supposed to teach me? That's my, for me, that's my relationship with pain. I have been through too many things that have hurt me. For me to continuously be victim, victimizing myself. For one, in blaming the world for two, that's not going to do nothing but have me at odds with the reality that I exist in. I can't hate people when I have to be around people. I can't be mad at people when I got to be around people. Especially for what I'm doing. I can't, I can't be carrying around a, a, a people hurt and try to cater to them and serve them and service them in some type of way. At the same time, it don't work like that, baby. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Because <sighs> some energy is going to expose itself in one way or another. Get comfortable with your nakedness because who told you it was wrong to be naked? Who told you it was wrong to express yourself? Who told you that these feelings were negative and meant to hurt you and should be avoided at all? Who told you that? There's levels to pain. Let me tell you something. You either want to experience the pain on the outside of your purpose or the pain it takes to be on the inside of it. Either way, baby, you're going to be hurting. You're going to be hurting. You're going to be hurting. But for me personally, I've experienced the other kind of pain. I've experienced the pain that, that made me want to kill myself, that had me cutting myself, that had me miserable, that had me upset, that had me depressed, that had me angry, that had storylines, that had voices, that had pain. I've experienced that version that perspective 
because I've been there. I know that it's okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Get somebody else to do it. I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to use that pain as a source of power. It's not that it happened to me. It's the fact that I got through it. It's not the fact that I went through it. It's the fact that I bodied it. It's not the fact that I had to, that, it, that the experience took place. It's the fact that that experience didn't break me even though it tried to. See, I'm, I'm, we're at war. We're at war for our belief system. If I can make you believe this, that, the third, everything negative, then I can have your soul. I can stop you from pursuing. I can stop you from trying. I can stop you and your seed from going to the heights that you know that you can. It's not about us. It's about our seed. There's a seed that we are carrying that needs to be harvested. And these, these emotions, these tricks, these lies that we keep allowing ourselves to fall victim to is stopping us from being able to harvest our seed. It's, it's, it's keeping our ground infertile. You have a seed inside of you that requires you to have an understanding of what and how you're feeling because I can't trust you with this seed birthing altogether if you don't even know how it's going to make you feel and once the feelings start coming if you don't even know how to operate and maneuver with them why who told you who told you well I'm telling you your emotions are valid you're not crazy. You're not extra. You're not the angry black woman. You can express yourself. You're not being argumentative. You're not causing a discord. You're not becoming divisional. You are trying to gain clarity. And over time, there's going to be a time where God is going to have you stop throwing your pearls before swine. But until then, keep expressing yourself. Keep speaking your truth. Keep being honest with yourself. Keep being honest with those around you in a way that it doesn't bring about more conflict. Now, understand you will be persecuted for your healing and for your truth but if you are not purposely trying to antagonize another person do you do you for your soul for your healing for your growth it's not about whoever was involved it's not about who did what you don't need an apology from them they don't need to acknowledge what they do you need to let it go for you Build a better relationship with yourself for you. Build a better rapport with your emotions for you, for what you want to birth. I don't give a fuck about a single person from my past that I feel like any kind of way towards any any season in my life, I have something that I need to birth. Even if they were to come back, I don't care because I have something that I need to birth. It's not about who was involved in the in in the in the germination of my seed. It's about what I choose to do with it now. Take my pain and I'm going to use it for power because I'm powerful. And that is the only thing that I can get out of this. It's not going to make me sad. It's not going to cause me confusion. It's not going to plague my mind with stories of worth and less than this. It's, it's not. What it is is, oh yeah, I got through that. I can do it again. Oh yeah, you tried me then, but you can't try me now. Oh yeah, I see a little dirty tricks and they can't walk, hold up to, to where I'm walking and how I'm walking now. Oh yeah, I see it. I see it, but trust and believe I believe in the source of my power. I believe in the strength that brought me through. I look at my life like, God damn, girl, you did that. You and your God really kept you. It gets me excited because it shows the power that is inside of me. It shows the purpose that is on me. It shows the source that is behind me. Start changing your perspective with your life. Change your perspective with your emotions and stand naked before yourself. And stop calling it wrong, bad, all these negative connotations that the world has told us. Because it's a lie. And it's keeping you stuck. And it's keeping you stagnant. And it's keeping you st stunted. Okay? Amen. I I'm so happy that you guys joined me today. I'm looking forward to Friday night. If you're here during the week on YouTube, then you see my shorts uploading every single day. Podcast family, I hope you are following me on social media platforms. But if you aren't, come check your girl out on Instagram at Aligned As Fuck. That is A L I G N E D A S F O. 
all one word. Find me on Facebook under Donna C. Shay Tara. We are on the road to 4K followers on the book, period. We are growing. We are building. We are creating a safe space. This community is dope. I love you. I like you. I like you. I pray that you have an awesome week. I will see you again, YouTube, on Friday. I will see you, Pod family, next Monday. If you want more content, please come and follow me on the different platforms. TikTok, of course, same name as my Instagram name. We get, we get, we have fun on TikTok. It's more my personality. So less, a lot less content and more just fun on TikTok. So please come find us, come follow us, like, comment, share, especially subscribe, and I catch you on the next video. Catching up too much, I almost called him Benjamin Tate. Uh, Benjamin Tate used to switch for a really good. Uh, 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 u